Hello everybody, I'm Stephen Jones at SDF.org and I'm going to talk about C64OS. As Robert Bernardo said, it's a new operating system for uh, the Commodore 64. In fact, a new version just got released a few weeks ago called version 1.04. And, um, let, oh, Gregory, what, what's the guy's name, Gregory? NACU. NASU. NACU. NASU. 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 Okay. So Gregory is, is the founder, writer, coder of, of 60, uh, C64 OS. And um, people, people wonder about it. Some, some people have kind of disparaged it a bit, you know, of why do you want to do this? Why do you want to make this kind of closed graphical user interface as far as why can't you just do things the old fashioned way through basic? And it, of course, it's, it's really interesting the, what he's done. And, and I see it as his focus is to create a framework and a standard for his GUI. And we're going to load that up in a second to show you what it looks like. Um, some of the hardware requirements is that uh, it runs off the SD, uh, SD to IEC. Uh, it does not run off of, of a 1541 natively. That's kind of beyond the scope. So, but the basics of what you want, you want a, your uh, normal Commodore 64 with Jiffy DOS. And the C6, uh, sorry, the SD to SCSI, uh, or SD to IEC uh, SD card reader. And uh, that's about it. And then once you get it installed, oops, fail demo, try again. Once you get it installed, this is what the boot looks up, and it, our boot screen looks like. This uh, looks very much like an operating system booting, such as Windows or Mac OS. Now it's going to open, there's two uh, applications that it opens into. One is the file manager, and then the other is the application launcher. So it's just going into the file manager now, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the app launcher for, where I'm going to start it, because that'll be a little more pleasant to look at. So this is uh, basically a, a desktop. You have these workspaces that you can toggle through. There are five of them, and it's... Uh, it is a GUI, but these are texts here. Uh, so you could, you could pick up one of these uh, iconified text strings here, and uh, you can double click on it. For instance, this about C64S. Let's just go ahead and double click on it. And there we go. We've got a little window that pops up and tells us the version we're running and copyright and things like that. Close the window as well. Uh, and then uh, there's also some applications here. For instance, he's written a chess program. Again, those are just text strings that you can move around on various desktops. You see a little path here as far as things are being loaded. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool, let's see if this does it. Yes. All right. He's got sort of this split screen uh, shade here that you can pull. Uh, you see the chessboard here, and uh, and then information about starting up the game. As we go back, we can go back home. That'll bring us back to our desktop. <clears throat> so some of the things that comments people have had about is like, okay, am, am I really going to live in this environment, or am I just going to, you know, use it to launch applications or or just toy with it. And, I, and again, I think that his motivation is to create a standard and a framework so that people can create apps for it and, uh, and basically just standardize it so that he's hoping that a community around it will develop these apps. Um, so there, I showed you the desktops here. There's uh, shortcuts here. So if I see the, the Commodore key and then a number, I can move to one of my other desktops or workspaces, and they just load up here. Um, and you can customize these as well. In fact, there's a, there's one little app here called Colors. 
I'm sorry, I'm doing the Steve Jobs thing because it's fun. I'll show you another Steve Jobs thing in a minute. And, uh, you know, as far as things, uh, uh, this is the color palette here that you can bring up. And if I can find themes. There's another one of those. Just kind of have these in here as... Uh, uh, placeholders so that you can develop your own. Okay, yeah, so here's a here's a themes app here. If I double click on that, it kind of has something similar that you might see some from some other operating system. And it, it's so clear, I mean, if I want to just highlight what, uh, you know, affirmative action does for, like, I have it set to light blue, I just click the color and I can toggle through and I can set black, white, red, uh, cyan, um, and once I close it, those settings are already there, so, oh, it worked for me before, or unless I'm just reading that color wrong. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I thought that I saw that I changed the color. Maybe, that, maybe it was defaulted to that and I didn't save it. Let's go to the file manager, because that's fun. And I wanted to make this as short as possible so that people can come and play with this. Disk. Okay, so this is the file manager. It's got a couple of panes here. It has recents from things that have been open. It has my devices. Currently, I only have the SD to IEC plugged in. did have the uh, 1541. We were running into a problem with that, so I'll have to work on that later. And then here, here are applications that are on the SD card, and I have some tabs here I can look at, showing me some of the directories and how I have this thing set up. So if I want to go look at the root directory on the SD card, I can just jump back to that, and this is basically what you'd see if you plugged it into a PC. I have some uh, D64 images, if I just double click on that folder, see all these D64 images here. Unfortunately, right now, you can't just highlight and double click on it and then suddenly you're loading the D64, but he wants to get to that point. Mm. Um, so let's jump back, because then I'll do something that will show you. This is an, a semi-new feature. If I click in the music folder, I have all these SIDs here. So if I highlight SID 1 and then I go up to Utilities, And load in my SID player or SID mm. preview. It should load in SID 1. There we go. And I can play it. Then I, I can still go back to the file browser, highlight another one, and then I can load that and then play that one. And now I can do the Steve Jobs demo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Whoa. Still in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Let's, and then we can jump back to the app launcher. Closes all that. Oh, cool. Did we crash it? <laughs> Look at that, see, we did. I don't have, see any activity on your SD2 IEC. I know, I know. <laughs> it, it died. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, woohoo. Woohoo, yeah. Went from a Steve Jobs demo to a Bill Gates yeah, demo. Yeah, to a Bill Gates yeah. demo. Yeah, look at that. I did, I did the Steve Jobs demo, then I did the Bill Gates demo. All right. Uh, and I, I'm going to show you one other thing on here. Let's see. Go. And that time, uh, Commodore Run did work. See how quickly it boots? No. Um, <laughs> no. It does work with fast loaders, right? So that yes, you use yeah. fast loader and then it'll just load faster. Jiffy DOS, Jiffy DOS is not required, but it's highly recommended. Jiffy DOS or a fast load cartridge or a super yeah. snapshot. Yeah, and so we have the super snapshot in here as well, although it's... I haven't really measured if that's made it super fast. Yes, it the did. One la oh, it did make it faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
The one other thing I wanted to look at was gallery, because I thought this was also cool. You saw a preview of this with the chessboard. Uh, let's look at starships. And then we'll set the slideshow to 10. And it, it's actually going, and this kind of boggled me at first. What's going on here? And then, oh yeah, there they are. <laughs> So it's loading the next image, actually. But there we go. So wherever you have this set, the shade, I had it set to 10 seconds. And those are koala images. There we go. And just watch it like that. Wow. <coughs> I thought that, you know, that, that whole shade thing is kind of nifty. Yeah. Reminiscent of the yeah, it is. That's that's one of the things. I, there's a lot of crossover and cross talk and coming back, and um, that's one of the things that's so amazing about being in 2023 and retro computing is that a lot of the things we already experienced for all these you know decades now can just be backported. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so, combined, which is the good, really good part. Yeah, it combined, right? And then of course, you know, this is a recent innovation, what, 15 years, 10, 15 years, and it makes life easy, but it's retro in a way, because it's yeah. 15 years or so, but um, anyways, again, uh, short demo, so come and play with it, there's a, there's a manual here, uh, uh, Gregory's business card is here, and um, it's a, available for purchase from him, and I think he wants, he wants to continue building community and people building applications to use is OS. Awesome. Yeah. Questions yeah. for Steven? Cool. Questions, anybody? Um, I've got a Thunder Drive uh, yeah. here that's doing a lot of nothing. Uh -huh. I wonder if later we could throw Try plugging that it in? on the Thunder Drive and see if it speeds things up. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Does yeah. that run faster on the like 128? Or is it just 64? It's in C, uh, C64 it's mode. C64. And uh, he specifically does not want to target things like running it off of a 1541, mm -hmm. um, just because of the, the space yeah. space limitations. Not not just speed. I mean, if you want to run it slow, <laughs> then turn Jiffy DOS off. And, okay. yeah. Well, well even, yeah. even Geos on, on a 64 was was very disappointing if you had Geos on the 128. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah. He doesn't want it to be a disappointing experience. It will. It will run faster on a, a super CPU. One thing. Uh, so do most things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. We did have a super CPU plugged into it last time. Um, one thing that I would like to know about is the mouse movement and the accuracy for GEOS users, how they feel about hmm. this. Because for me, the mouse pointer is really, um, it's r really granular. It, it feels really nice. Hmm. And it, it, it's just a normal 1351 mouse yeah. plugged into port one. I think you can use a joystick if you want, and then of course there's keyboard shortcuts if you're inclined to that kind yeah. of thing. So, is there any sort of um, mouse acceleration, or is it just a constant? I don't think there's mouse mouse acceleration. Oh. I haven't seen okay. that, but I think that there's probably some settings I haven't found, and maybe information in the manual. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am not the. I, I'm not an expert. This is so new to me too. I've only had it a few months now, and mm -hmm. then I just did the upgrade uh, before this event, so, cool. yeah. Question, um, any chance the author would port this to the Mega 65? Oh. It sounds like the ideal OS for that machine, like it, much faster to go around. I know that um, for certain things like V64 or Ultimate 64, there's, in the Ultimate 64, I think it can run on that. On the V64, I don't think it can run. On the Mega 65, you just have the Commodore core. Bear, just use yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, um, uh, there is the, the alternate system, Triangular OS, that is being built for the various Commodore computers. In fact, we have Triangular OS working on oh. the C128 back there in 40 column mode. Uh -huh. It's written in basic 7.0, but <laughs> the, yeah, it's kind of slow, 
But the author says that Triangular OS is building one for the Mega 65. Oh, okay, and they'll run at 40 megahertz. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some competition between uh, yeah. uh, retro OS. Yeah. The, um, oh, up, the upgrading was interesting. So I had 1.0, and there's four minor versions that have been pushed since then. They are all. They were all car files, and I had to do them in um, order, in, in sequence. Mm -hmm. So I did one to two to three to four, um, and it was so straightforward. I did it from the from the file. Uh, let's see the file manager, and um, it was just a car file, and I double clicked on it. It ran the installer, and then told me to reboot, restart. Mm -hmm. um, so that was. Um, I was nervous about that because I thought I, I would end up, you know, damaging something and have to backtrack. Uh, but it was pretty smooth to do those updates. So it was cool. It was fun. Yeah. Anyways, thank you, Steven.